Hello students and learners, welcome to the new lecture and in this lecture we are going to discuss about mechanism of respiration, exchanging of the uh, gases, okay, that is from the alveolus to the capillary. Alveolus e, that is present in the lungs, okay, right of the lung uh, alveolus you can see the capillaries and next the transportation of the gases. Next is gas exchange from capillaries to cells and back. So these are the topics that we are going to discuss in this lecture, okay. So before we begin our lesson, you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe so that if you subscribe, you will get notifications on when the class is going to begin. Okay, let us start our discussion, the mechanism of respiration. So mechanism is the process, how the process is going to occur. Okay, the process is how it is, that is known as process. So hence, the mechanism of respiration in human beings means in which way and in which process the respiration is going on in human beings that we are going to discuss in this topic. Okay, the first is the breathing is a process of inhaling and exhaling gases. So what is inhaling? When you take the air into respiratory tract, okay, respiratory tract that is known as inhalation and after the respiration if the air is entering out of the body, so that is known as exhalation, okay. So these are main differences between the inhalation and exhalation. Inhalation means the air enters into the body. Exhalation means the air escapes from the body into the environment. Okay. So during this process, the lungs are involved in the breathing. So breathing means just taking in air and releasing air is known as breathing. So the chest is slightly increases during the inhalation and reverse back during the exhalation. For example, if you take in air, okay, if you take in air, so if the air is in, so what happens, the volume, the volume of the lungs is going to get increased, okay, the volume of the lungs is increasing when you are taking the air and if you are taking, uh, if you are releasing the air out, okay, if you release the air out, so what happens, the volume of the lungs is going to decrease. So this is only the difference. When the air is taken in, the volume of the lungs increasing and when you release the air out, the volume of the lungs increases. Okay. So this is only the main difference. So what is the volume? Volume means the space. So when you exhale, the space decreases. The space decreases. If the space is decreasing, what happens? So the air is going to move out. Okay. It is going to move out. If you inhale, so or if the space is increasing, if the space is increasing, what happens? So the uh, the volume increases. The volume increases, what happens? The air is will be taken in. Okay. So lungs are spongy. Okay. Over well, here we have to discuss revert back. Revert back means they will come to the normal position. Okay. So the lungs are spongy. Why be, why the lungs are spongy? The lungs are spongy because of the alveoli. So in the previous lesson also we have discussed the alveoli means the a balloon shaped structure. So this is the bronchiole. Okay, this is the bronchiole and this is the alveolus. Okay, so these alveolus are lined with moisture and along with it, it is containing the air or empty space. Why the empty space? Why because to uh, help in the exchanging of the gases okay and if you compare both lungs the right and the left lung the left lung is slightly smaller slightly smaller why because to provide space for the heart okay so if the left lung is smaller in that space that is given by the left lung so that the heart can be accommodated over there accommodation means the presence okay so are the space for the heart okay remember the both lungs are not same in size the left lung is a little bit smaller so left lung is smaller because to provide space for the heart okay so this is the reason so it may be asked in a multiple choice question so that you have to remember left lung is smaller to provide space for the heart okay next point is they are protected by the two membranes it means the lungs let us consider these are the lungs okay so the right lung and also the left lung so these right and left lung both are protected by a membrane known as pleura okay so here you can see the pleura is protect is the membranes of the lungs so here in these membranes so let us consider these are the membranes so these membranes are filled with fluid okay so this fluid main function is to protect the lungs for example when you fall down or if you if you uh, if you take any any shock like uh, any sharp blow of the cricket ball or volleyball or anything so those uh, these membranes along with the fluids are going to protect from those shocks and also from the injuries so remember these membranes are helping the lungs 
and uh, they the wall the fluid which is present in these membranes are going to protect from the shocks and injuries injuries means some kind of uh, damage okay and these are going to these fluids along with the membrane are going to help in exchanging or uh, help in expansion so what is expansion the size the size of the lungs okay the size of the lungs are going to get increased such kind of process is helped by these membranes along with the fluid or you can call it the pleura along with the fluid okay so next is the diaphragm so diaphragm is a membrane okay muscular membrane it is going to help in the uh, respiration or it is going to help in the breathing process or you can call it as the inhaling and exhaling gases okay both terms are same let us consider this these are the right and the left lung okay so remember these are the trachea bronchioles okay so these are going to enter into these lungs okay let us draw the diagram very neatly okay these are the uh, trachea it is going to divide into two bronchus okay so here is the left lung okay these are uh, this is the left lung and this is the right lung. this is a rough diagram okay so in the textbook you can see the clear diagram so these lungs are protect these lungs are protected by the pleura just now we have discussed and now what, what we are discussing there is a membrane okay muscular membrane so that is known as diaphragm this diaphragm is present right after the lungs so this is a dome shaped what is meant by dome this is a convex can you see here the convex and uh, this convex shape is the shape of this uh, diaphragm okay what is the re what is the main important functions of this diaphragm it is going to help in the inhaling and exhaling gases okay so this di diaphragm is a flexible 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 means it can move in any direction up down or and so on okay only two uh, two positions that is upside and downside okay it is a flattened muscular muscle help in the inhalation and exhalation of air by the lungs and here it is in the chest cavity so these lungs are in the chest cavity chest means the region okay the region uh, where it is present so this chest cavity is uh, containing the skin okay the chest cavity is made up of ribs okay these are the bones and next the muscles along with the skin so ribs muscles and skin these three are going to make up the chest cavity in the chest cavity you can see the lungs are present the two lungs are present and here there is a heart okay along with the heart so that is located in the chest cavity okay so the diaphragm is dome shaped and extending into the chest cavity so this diaphragm may move upside or downside so when the when the diaphragm moves up what happens the volume okay when the diaphragm is going to move up the volume is going to get decreased so if the volume gets decreased what happens the air the air exit okay the air will exit out of the lungs so there is a main uh, main uh, fact over there and if the volume decreases okay or the, if the diaphragm moves down okay diaphragm moves down the volume of the lungs is going to increase okay the volume is going to increase if the volume of the lungs increases what happens the air enters in okay the air enters inside okay this is only the difference so remember once again so when the diaphragm is moving up okay when the diaphragm is moving up what happens the volume of the volume of the lungs are going to get decreased okay so if the volume of the lungs decreases what happens so the air out the air is going to move out of the lungs so if the diaphragm is moving downside okay downside so what happens the volume the volume is going to get increased if the volume of the lungs are getting increased the air enters in okay air enters into the lungs okay these are fact and you have to remember these why because they may ask in the multiple choice questions are in one in one mark answer and so on so these all are the important topics not only for the marks you have to remember these so that for the knowledge okay and here the inhalation flattens it and moves downwards and results in the increased chest cavity so increased chest cavity that is nothing but the contraction so what is meant by contraction so contraction means the flattening so the dome shape it is a dome shape of the uh, diaphragm and it is going to get flat almost flat so when the, it is when it becomes flat that is known as contraction why because it is made up of muscles when it is when the muscles contract they will form a flat shape so the exhalation makes the diaphragm dome shape okay so 
and as a result the air move inward it is the diaphragm is going to move inwards of the chest cavity that is known as relaxation relaxation means the dome shape okay so dome shape this is a dome shape this is known as relaxation the flattened shape that is known as contraction okay so by this way you can remember okay r means dome shape or convex shape and the contraction means a flat okay and next is the movement of the lungs are coordinated according to the need so what is meant by according to the need you will do different different functions sometimes you will play sometimes you will uh, sit in one place and so on so these all are the different different conditions so example let us take let us take the example you are running so if you are running what will happen you will take the respiration or you will take the breathing at faster rate why because your body needs oxygen your body needs more oxygen than the normal okay so as a result the breathing should be faster if the breathing should be faster what will happen so these are the lungs if the breathing should be faster what will happen the dome shaped diaphragm will move up and down faster why the dome shaped uh, why the diaphragm will move up and down faster why because there should be a maximum rate of the breathing if the maximum rate of the breathing is there the more amount of oxygen will be taken in so this is another this is the main uh, point here so it means it will be more a uh, the diaphragm will move up and down faster when there is the need of the more oxygen and this diaphragm will be at a normal state and it will move normally when you are sitting at one place or when you are relaxed okay so during the exercise the breathing is faster than the normal and oxygen is required to replace the carbon dioxide so why the oxygen is required and why the carbon dioxide has to be replaced so let us consider so this is the cellular respiration the cellular respiration is occurring so during the cellular respiration what will happen the glucose molecules plus oxygen will be uh, utilized so these oxygen along with the glucose releases energy releases energy plus co2 plus water okay so this is the reaction so this is going to form in the cells okay you have to remember this process the cellular respiration process is going to occur inside the cells okay so what is pro what is producing here the carbon dioxide has to be removed from the body okay so as a result to replace the carbon dioxide what is required so the oxygen is required it means to remove the carbon dioxide oxygen is required so this is the main fact over here so this respiration or this breathing is the main function so that the carbon dioxide will be removed from the body and oxygen is added to the body okay so this oxygen will be replaced with carbon dioxide and next when the nerves leading to the leading from the brain respiratory muscles are cut the respiratory movements and breathing stops so the movement of uh, this uh, respiration or the respiratory process is in contact is in contact with the brain so that the uh, signals will receive from the brain and that helps in the constant movement of the respiratory constant movement of the uh, respiratory system so where the dome shaped uh, uh, diaphragm and the in increasing and decreasing of this chest cavity will be in the normal process okay or according to the need where it has to be occurred okay so next the questions are asked in this topic so first is the what is the role of diaphragm and ribs so ribs are present in the chest cavity okay or uh, are above the chest cavity and this dome and ribs are going to play a major role in the respiration so the diaphragm and ribs are helping in the breathing of air breathing of air means taking in air and releasing air that is the breathing so these diaphragm and ribs both are important and it attains the dome shape when the uh, when the diaphragm is attaining the dome shape what does it indicate it is a relaxing okay it is a relaxed condition of this uh, this uh, diaphragm okay when this uh, diaphragm is attaining the flat shape what does it indicate it is contraction okay so contraction of the muscles so when the diaphragm attains dome shape what does it indicate it is moving enter into the chest cavity so if it is moving into the chest cavity what does it indicate the air which is present in the lungs will be pushed outside the body or the air is sent outside the body so when the contraction is occurred what happens this diaphragm is going to move down so if it is going to move down what happens the volume of the chest cavity increases as a result the air enters inside so this is the process of the uh, process of the breathing air in the respiratory system okay so the ribs move forward so when the ribs move forward ribs move forward when there is a contraction of the diaphragm okay and they move backward when the diaphragm relaxes 
so when the diaphragm is relaxing that is nothing but dome shaped attaining in this in this condition it is going to relax so when they relax so what happens the volume is going to get decreased and the ribs will move there move into backside position or into their position it means during the uh, during the dome shape formation the ribs will back okay they will move back and when there is a contraction the ribs move forward okay so these are the main important steps okay both diaphragm and ribs play in breathing and uh, it is the ribs play major role in women during the breathing so ribs play major role in both women, women men and women but when compared to them both men and women in the women the ribs are going to play major role and that helps in the breathing okay and the next question is what can be concluded from this so we can conclude from this from the above topics so that the respiratory movements are in constant connection with the brain that is through the nose okay from the brain okay so these are the nerves from the brain the nerves are coming to the respiratory system as a result there will be a movements so if this nerve system is cut what happens there is no signal to the respiratory system and there is no movement in the respiratory system so as a result there will be a problem in the respiration and the person may die okay so what happens during the process of the breathing so during the process of the breathing the movements are well coordinated to supply the oxygen and removal of the carbon dioxide constantly during the cellular respiration the carbon dioxide will be released along with water and also energy so this carbon dioxide is a waste product for us and this carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide has to be removed from the body so by a process known as breathing okay so this carbon dioxide has to be replaced with oxygen so again this oxygen is utilized for the cellular respiration that is oxygen plus glucose leads to the power leads to the production of energy plus water plus co2 again this carbon dioxide waste product it has to be replaced with oxygen and so on so such guys such kind of cycle repeats repeats and go and so on till the person is alive okay so the which gas need to be removed from the body during the exhalation so the carbon dioxide which is released here this carbon dioxide which is released here has to be replaced or removed from the body during the exhalation okay exhalation means removal of air from the body or uh, exhaling gases okay so next question is where does the extra amount of gas coming from so what they are asking about they are asking about the carbon dioxide so where does carbon dioxide is coming from so this carbon dioxide is coming from the cellular respiration can you see here during the cellular respiration the carbon dioxide is coming extra carbon dioxide is coming so this carbon dioxide has to be removed okay so in this question they are asking that what is the composition of inhaled air when the exhaled air is compared with inhale when compared with inhaled air is there any difference in the composition so if you see here in this table the gases are given in the air so especially here the main gases in this topic is oxygen carbon dioxide and nitrogen so there are many gases in the air but we are not going to bother about other gases like uh, helium argon xenon radon and so on we are not going to consider all those we are going to focus mainly on these three gases over in this topic so first previously the inhaled air of the oxygen is 21 percentage okay so after exhaling in the exhaled air the 21 percentage is reduced to 16 percentage okay this is about oxygen and here the carbon dioxide is 0.03 percentage in the inhaled air it is increased to 4.4 percentage okay 4.4 percentage this is about carbon dioxide here there is here what you can see the oxygen is reduced oxygen is reduced and carbon dioxide is increased okay so by this way we can confirm that oxygen is utilized oxygen is utilized in the body for the cellular respiration okay oxygen is utilized in the body for the cellular respiration and over here here you can increase the carbon dioxide so what does it indicates it is releasing okay the carbon dioxide is released from the body okay this one is the reason the 3.0.3 .3 percentage is increased to 4.4 percentages hence we can we, we can conclude that the carbon dioxide is released during the cellular respiration and oxygen is consumed or utilized during the cellular respiration and if you take the nitrogen it will be 78 percentage in the inhalation air and after the in after the inhalation that is exhaled air also 78 percentage the percentage is constant it means 
the nitrogen is not consumed and nitrogen is not released so this is about the composition of air and their uh, changing in the composition percentage okay and the next is gases exchange that is alveolar to capillaries okay so here the gas exchange means the exchanging of the oxygen and the carbon dioxide only so these are these two gases only important in the respiration okay so diffusion of the gas takes place from alveolar to blood and vice versa first of all we have to understand about what is meant by diffusion so let us consider this is a room okay so you are going to release a scent molecule here for the first time okay so for the first five minutes for the first uh, around one minute the scent is over here and after two minutes the scent will reach here and after three minutes the scent will reach here and after the five minutes the entire room is filled with the scent okay previously it is in the corner but it is slowly it is uh, distributing its scent molecule towards all the corners of the room okay so this is known as diffusion so here the molecules from the higher concentration is moving to the lower concentrations till it becomes equilibrium till the the till the molecules will attain the equilibrium it means till the molecules spread in the entire entire room that is known as uh, uh, that is known as diffusion so osmosis is different osmosis means there should be a membrane there should be a biological membrane or any membrane so that the molecules are going to move through the membrane okay that we will discuss in coming lectures so here the air sacs air sacs are one cell thickness so what is meant by air sac air sac is nothing but alveolus so let us consider this is a bronchiole so this bronchiole is going to end into the alveolus so this alveolus you can see here so let us take the small portion of the alveoli how it is going to look like so it is going to look in this way okay so this is the wall of the alveoli these are one cell thickness so this is the nucleus inside the cells of the alveoli so this is the cells of the alveoli and they are one cell thickness and it is going to help in the diffusion of the gases so what the what the gases it is going to get diffused the oxygen and carbon dioxide is going to get diffused so these are nothing but the blood capillary okay these are known as a blood capillary so in the blood capillary the carbon dioxide will be given into the alveolus and oxygen is taken into the uh, into the blood okay F carbon dioxide is going to enter into the alveolus or alveoli from the blood and oxygen is entering from the alveoli to the blood so that is it, that is in the formation of a diffusion okay so actually the blood is not entering into the alveoli only the gases are getting exchanged from the alveolus to the blood capillary let us consider this is the blood capillary okay so this is the blood capillary so this is the blood all tiny dots are nothing but blood so they are moving in this direction okay so this is the wall of the alveoli remember this is the wall of the alveoli so what happens the carbon dioxide that is present here it will enter into this okay why because this uh, blood capillary is also made up of one cell thickness this is also made up of one cell thickness and it is going to enter into the alveolus and at the same time the oxygen is present in the sac that is known as alveolus this oxygen is going to enter again into the blood capillary okay previously it is deoxygenated previously the blood blood is deoxygenated and now the blood turned into oxygenated okay why it is oxygenated why because it is combining with the oxygen okay so this is a process how the diffusion is going to occur in the blood capillaries and alveolus so the dark red blood from the heart flows to these capillaries to collect the oxygen from the alveoli so here the heart okay so the heart is there this heart is going to pump blood to the lungs okay so you can see this process is going to occur in the lungs this process is going to occur in the lungs and this lungs is going to pump the blood again to the heart and this heart is going to pump blood to the all cells cells of the body okay again the cells are going to produce ox deoxygenated blood or they are going to release carbon dioxide here you can see blood containing carbon dioxide the blood containing carbon dioxide they enter they will release into the lungs okay they will uh, uh, not the lungs they will be sent to the heart okay again the heart is going to send to the lungs lungs to the heart again and so on so such kind of uh, circulation will be seen okay so 
here what will happen what they are saying so at the same time the carbon dioxide passes out of the capillaries so by this way the carbon dioxide is taken into the alveolus and oxygen is given into the blood and so on okay so oxygen blood is bright red in color so oxygen blood is bright red in color it is nothing but here you can see after the lungs you can see a uh, bright red okay bright red in color bright red bright red color of the blood why because it is combined with oxygen okay here the heart is there it is going to it is sent to the cells okay in the cells the oxygen the oxygen blood is there it is dark red okay dark red color will be seen in the deoxygenated blood that is coming from the body parts okay again it is sent to the heart and so on so this is known as double circulation we will discuss such kind of double circulation in the transportation chapter okay so the composition of the gases inhaled air and exhaled air is different that we have discussed just now okay that we have discussed just now about this table and the total lung capacity of the human beings is about 5800 ml so 5800 ml means around 5 liters okay 5 liters 800 ml okay so or you can call it is nearly it is nearly to the 6 liters okay 6 liters of the volume is the lungs okay both lungs has the volume of the 6 liters or you can call it as a 3 liters plus 3 liters okay so this is the volume of the lungs so the volume of the air uh, during the restoration condition is around inhaled and exhalation is around 500 ml so you are not using the complete 6 liters for the respiration or the complete 6 liters for the breathing how much you are using only half liter okay half liter means 500 ml so 1 liter 1 liter is equal to 1000 ml okay 1000 ml 6 liters means 6000 ml okay so here it is 5 liters 800 ml means it is near to the 6 liters okay so only half liter of the volume is used for the breathing okay or half liter of the volume of the air is used for the breathing and remaining remaining 5 and half liter of the volume is not used for the breathing and in the breathing also and around 1200 ml 1200 ml of the air remains in the lungs after the complete exhalation so if you remove the air from the lungs if you remove the air from the lungs also then over there you can see 1200 ml of the air is present in the lungs so whatever the gas that is present uh, that is nothing but 1200 ml this 1200 ml contains oxygen okay so this oxygen is slowly get diffused into the blood from the alveolus so this this 1200 ml is very very important for the respiration okay so the question is why does the amount of the oxygen vary between the exhalation exhaled and inhaled air the oxygen is utilized in cellular respiration so the composition of the oxygen is in inhaled air and exhaled air is varying so here the oxygen is consumed so this one of the region there is a variation so next question is what has raised the percentage of the carbon dioxide inhaled air okay that is cells are going to release the carbon dioxide when they are releasing the carbon dioxide that is also only in the cellular respiration only they are going to release the carbon dioxide along with water and energy so this is the responsible for the really a raised raised percentage of the carbon dioxide in the exhaled air so next is the transport of the gases or transportation of the gases here the hemoglobin it is a protein where the hemoglobin is present the blood contains different types of the cells rbc wbc platelets and so on we are very uh, we are interested only in the rbc in this case of topic okay let us consider this is the rbc so this rbc contains hemoglobin molecules so hemoglobin is going to give a red uh, red color to the blood okay so this hemoglobin let us take the small hemoglobin over here one hemoglobin molecule the hemoglobin molecule is made up of proteins hemo heme proteins so this hemoglobin has iron atom in the center okay how many molecules so four hemoglobin molecules are present in the uh, four hemoglobin proteins are present in the hemoglobin protein 1 protein 2 protein 3 and protein protein 4 four proteins are present each protein contains one one iron atom okay and the same it is almost similar to the chlorophyll in the chlorophyll also you can see same kind of proteins but instead of iron it has a magnesium here the iron is present iron atom is present but here 
in the chlorophyll magnesium atom is present okay this is only the difference between the chlorophyll and also in chlorophyll and uh, hemoglobin okay so next what is going to happen this iron atom iron atom which is present in the hemoglobin proteins is going to bind with oxygen okay so this is the main thing over here so this rbc it binds with oxygen to form oxyhemoglobin it is oxyhemoglobin why because it is going to bind with oxygen and get transported into the different parts of the body different parts of the body means whether it may be leg hand brain and so on so the next is the carbon dioxide is usually transported as bicarbonates it means this carbon dioxide whatever the carbon dioxide is there it is going to transport in the form of bicarbonate why because it is going to get dissolved in the plasma plasma blood plasma means a fluid okay a fluid which is present in blood okay so a yellow color light yellow colored fluid which is present in the blood is known as plasma so from the plasma also this carbon dioxide is going to get traveled and other other thing is it is going to get transported in the blood in the form of bicarbonates okay so this only thing the carbon dioxide may travel in the form of bicarbonates and in the and along with dissolved in the plasma dissolved in plasma okay so these are the two two steps of the traveling of the carbon dioxide in the blood okay are two different ways of the carbon dioxide transport in the blood okay next is the equation of the hemoglobin we have to write the equation of the hemoglobin so how do you write the hemoglobin uh, equation so hemoglobin we are just writing the hb plus 4o2 why we have to write the 4o2 did you remember here so this is a hemoglobin okay so this is the hemoglobin how many proteins are there four proteins are there each protein can bind with one one oxygen so if one protein one protein is going to bind with one oxygen how many proteins are total four okay why because four proteins so this is only the reason we are writing the 4o2 okay Ox yeah, hemoglobin plus 4o2 gives rise to hemoglobin oxy hemoglobin okay oxy hemoglobin this is the formula oxy hemoglobin where you can see the oxy hemoglobin you can see in the lungs only okay you can see this uh, reaction in the lungs okay so we know that from the lungs the blood is again transported to the heart the heart is going to pump to the different parts of the body okay the blood from the heart is pumped to the different parts of the body okay so here reverse this reaction this react reverse the reaction is going to occur in the tissues how do you write in the reverse direction okay first hb okay reverse this hb o24 okay will be forming this okay hb plus 4o2 okay so it is in the lungs and this reaction is in the tissue okay reaction in the tissue or cells this will be seen so this 4o2 is given to the cells okay cells of the body and this process will be seen in the lungs this process will be seen in the tissues okay so this is deoxyhemoglobin okay and this is oxyhemoglobin this will be done and at the sea level at the sea level uh, uh, hemoglobin binds with oxygen okay all hemoglobin molecules are going to bind with uh, with oxygen okay all let us consider these are the 100 hemoglobin molecules just for our explanation we are taking the 100 hemoglobin molecules so this 100 hemoglobin molecules are going to bind with 400 oxygen molecules okay so this is the process that you can see in the normal sea level but when you go to the higher altitude around 13 kilometers from the sea level or 13 kilometers from the normal ground or you can call it as a eight miles so what will happen so this 100 hemoglobin molecules can bind only 50 percentage up to 50 percentage it means it is not going to bind with 400 oxygen molecules it is going to bind with around 200 okay why why the why that uh, such kind of a weird behavior that is due to the less oxygen so the oxygen is not sufficient the oxygen is away almost near to the half of the oxygen that you find on the normal sea level so this is only the reason the hemoglobin will bind only 50 percentage of oxygen molecules okay so it means hence you can say that only oxy hemoglobin is around 50 percentage in the in the altitudes 
so this is only the reason when you are flying the flights so they are going to play they are going to maintain the pressurized cabins okay in the cabins they will maintain some amount of pressure along with the required amount of the oxygen in the planes okay so and this condition also reverse in the deep sea levels if you go deep the conditions will be different when you when you compare to the normal sea level so this condition of the half of the hemoglobin will form oxyhemoglobin and this half of the hemoglobin is not sufficient for the body okay why because the blood has only 50 percentage only 50 percentage of the oxyhemoglobin is not sufficient not sufficient for the body okay in that case your body is going to get tired and you are going to feel weak and so on so these are the conditions why because your cells are not going to get the enough oxygen okay so they cannot carry sufficient oxygen to the tissues next the gas is exchanged from capillaries to the back so just now we have seen the how the hemoglobin molecules are formed this these oxyhemoglobin molecules are going to release oxygen at lower concentrations so in the lungs higher concentrations higher concentrations of oxygen will be seen in lungs okay as a result the hemoglobin is going to bind with oxygen and in the tissues okay there is a lower concentrations of the oxygen so in the lower concentration of oxygen is there so this oxy this hem oxy hemoglobin is going to release the oxygen okay so it is a binding of oxygen binding of oxygen with hemoglobin will be seen in the lungs and releasing of the oxygen will be seen in the tissues okay so this is our main thing it is exactly equal to the reaction that we have discussed now that is oxy hemoglobin this is the reaction one and is the reaction two okay so deoxyhemoglobin binds with oxygen at the higher levels of the oxygen in the lungs and carbon dioxide water and energy are produced during the cellular respiration and produced energy whatever the energy that is produced in the cellular respiration that energy will be utilized for the different purposes different purposes means different functioning of the body different metabolism functions of the body okay and some amount of energy some amount of energy is stored in the form of atp okay so do you remember atp and adp reactions okay the adp okay adp means adenosine diphosphate will turn into adenosine triphosphate so by absorbing the energy okay so this atp is also energy currency of the cell so such kind of energy production or such kind of atp molecules is produced in the produced in the mitochondria okay so we will discuss about the mitochondria in coming lessons okay and i hope this lecture is helpful to you and if you haven't subscribed subscribe to the channel so that if you subscribe you will get notifications when the lecture is about to start and like the video share and comment and if you have any doubts or any questions uh, leave it in the comment section so that if you post that questions in the comment section we will uh, answer uh, answer to the question and if you have any suggestion also then you can use the comment section and in the next lecture we are going to discuss about cellular respiration okay so from the cellular respiration we are going to discuss in the next lecture and uh, we will see you in the next lecture okay